Guys, I swear to God, this is not planned. This is real life. The pagers went off. Hi, I'm Stavros. Good morning and welcome to Shannon Fire Station. Today, I'll be showing you all around this new Scania P320 fire appliance. So we'll be getting a full tour and a test drive with Clare County Fire and Rescue Service who have put this fire appliance into service recently. It's gonna be a good one, guys. Let's go. Okay, so I'm now joined by David Mason. He has 12 years served as a firefighter here at Shannon Fire Station for the Clare County Fire and Rescue Service. So David, where will we start? Okay, well, first of all, Stavros, you're welcome to Shannon Fire Station. Thank you very all right, much. And as you said earlier on, we're going to be looking at the new P320 appliance. Yeah. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is, we're, since we're here at the front, we may as well just have a look at the winch quickly. Yeah. Uh, so this winch now is rated for about two and a half ton. And, uh, but for, to be more safe about it, we generally operate it as if it was a one ton winch. Yeah. Um, as you can see here, this is where we'd uh, plug in the controls. We have emergency stops on both sides. Yeah. But even with the controls plugged in, they won't operate unless we activate the isolator switch yeah. or deactivate it. So okay. They, they so another emerge. Yeah. Yeah. They took off the P. Well, <laughs> on the P320. We, we, I think the emergency <laughs> stop was slightly more important than the P, so <laughs> we yes. had to sacrifice it. And David, um, this uh, Sean Cho up in Spiddle in County Galway, correct, there are the yeah. people who built. Yeah. So put the body the onto, it, the, yeah. onto the chassis. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. So yeah. that's them guys, if you want to know yeah. more about them, Sean Show mm -hmm. up in Spiddle. Yeah. In and as you said earlier on, as you said earlier on, the, the word Scania was in silver. Oh yes. But uh, yeah. being firefighters, we like our yellow and red, so we had it changed. Yeah, because this was a kind <laughs> of a last minute thing. It was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. they had to change the red. <laughs> yeah. And David, yeah. you were explaining as well about this. Okay, the, so the winch, yeah. as I said, you know, we operate it as if it's a one ton winch, but in order to double its strength, we use this. This is a snatch block. Mm. Um, so once you have the cable connected to the vehicle you want to tow or pull, um, you can at one, say the, cable, the vehicle is two ton. Yeah. And as I said, we're only operating at one ton. We let, then run the cable through the snatch block, right, which would be attached to a strap. And if you could just yeah. imagine that this is wrapped around a strong tree or a strong pillar, yeah. right? The snatch block will double the strength of your, of your winch or your oh, cable. Oh yeah, okay. So now you're able to pull the two ton. If you added on a second snatch block, you'd now be able to pull three ton. So That's these are very important for what Extremely important yeah. and very effective. Very Brilliant. effective for us as well. Because you're not putting full strain on the motor. Yeah. It takes some of the strain for you. So that's the winch, right. David. Yeah. There's, there's so much, guys. There's so much to show you on this fire appliance. Now, we just have a small diesel tank here and your add blue tank as well. But I really yeah. like yeah. these clips, David. Yeah, those, those clips yeah. are brilliant. They're very easy to use, uh, even with gloves on. Very well designed. Again, we have the fire extinguishers in there. We, uh, yeah. we have uh, foam, dry powder, and CO2. And in here, your Up spine here, board. we yeah. have our spine board. This used to be inside in the cab above the firefighter's head, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a lot safer and more convenient to have it on the outside here where we can grab it when we need it without yeah. having to climb on board again. It's a far, far better yeah, location. Yeah. And up here in Irish, David. Service to Eugene on Clare, yeah. which is Fire Service of Clare. Yeah. There you go, yeah, guys. Yeah, very nice symbol. Yeah, we'll nice show symbol. you inside the cab shortly. There's yeah. just a lot of equipment here. All right, so if you just have a yeah. quick look at the equipment here, if you start here in the bottom shelf, if you'll have a look at the shelves, this rated for 150 kilos. Yeah. Whereas if you were to go up here, it's rated for 200 kilos. So it's, yeah. all, it's, you know, it's all simplified for you. And this one is the whole width. This one goes to full length across. Yeah. It'll be used. Look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Full width of the body. Yeah, it's... it's it and David, these bodies are all plastic now. They bought this, this is our first yeah. uh, plastic body um, fire, fire, fire appliance at this station. And uh, to be honest, you'd, we wouldn't know the difference. It hasn't yeah. caused us any problems anyway. That, so I'm sure it's been well tested. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we have an all plastic body as opposed to this aluminium. This one, which is a yeah. 03 uh, appliance, is uh, also, it's all aluminium. Yeah. And just to point out, they're actually referred to as Class B appliances. So mm -hmm. if you hear of a Class B appliance, you'll actually know that it's a water tender, which is your standard fire appliance as most people would think of it. Okay. So yeah, let's just pull out that drawer, David, so just to show yeah. them some of the equipment. As you can see now, even the shelves are very simple and easy to yeah. use. Um, so what we have here then, this is our hydraulic pump. Mm -hmm. This would be used for uh, cutting, uh, for using uh, the jaws of life as people oh, yes. know them. There they right? are, guys, the Absolutely. jaws of life. The jaws of life, yeah. right? There so this, one, this particular one here would be a spreader, so it would spread metal mm. apart. 
uh, to be able to open things up to get inside. Yeah. The RAM here to support or again uh, to spread things apart if you have to. Yeah. Then here is you would have the cutters itself and then they're connected to the hydraulic pump by this connection using oh, one yeah. of these hoses. Oh yes. Okay. And the hoses are color coded so you know which color is going to which tool. Oh yes. Okay. But these um I think the drawers make it so much easier for you, don't they? Well, yeah, they do because yeah. I mean, sometimes you, you know you're under pressure, everybody's busy. You know, you don't need, you don't want to have to have two people to be pulling them out with the weight yeah. on them. So, if okay. we move down from there, what we have up here then are, are our lines. If we were to go to a chimney fire, generally what we do is we try and take put the fire out from the heart. But if you can't, if you have to go up in the roof, the old fashioned way, so to speak, yeah. then you have to make up ladders. We have to harness up. We have to be tied in. So we'd be using ropes and lines to uh, secure ourselves with a fall arrest system. So if you yeah. were to slip on the roof, your, your harness is the same as a mountain climber would be, yeah. and you won't fall. Oh yeah, oh, very All good. Right. Below that then you have, this is our EFR, first mm -hmm. responder bag. Right, so we're, most of us in the station are trained to EFR level, which is one level above a first aid responder. That okay. extra little bit does help us. Um, mm -hmm. We don't carry any meds on board. Yeah. Right, we do have oxygen there, as you can see. Yeah. They're all sealed and tagged. So, and they're serviced and uh, checked up on for the mm -hmm. dates of anything that might be inside in it on a regular basis. And we have two compressed air tanks. Are these, on either side. <laughs> oh, yeah, these are actually uh, yeah. air cylinders, mm -hmm. which we use for the breeding apparatus. Yeah. These used to be in the cab as well. So by having them out here in this dead space that would originally have been here, mm -hmm. it just frees up more space in the cab again. Oh, yeah. And uh, we have four BA sets on board, so we have four spare cylinders. You know? Yeah, compressed, um, compressed gas, guys. It says compressed, compressed air. gas, but it's actually, it's just air. It's compressed air. All right. Okay. You know, I know it says compressed gas, but it's, yeah. it's just air. I mean, you have to breathe it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So... Oh, these are... You were telling me about these, David. Look, these airbags. Yeah, these airbags. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And again, these are operated from the air cylinders as well. Yeah. And uh, this one here, as you just saw there, was 23 ton. Yeah. This appliance probably weighs about 15 ton. Mm -hmm. So this bag, this bag here of 18 inches square, yeah. could lift this whole appliance. So you pump air into these bags and they lift up yeah. a car, a truck, yeah. Yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. And the, the, you, the dials and the units are in here for to do that. Brilliant. All right. Okay, up here um, we have all the hoses. Our, this is yeah. our first aid high pressure hose reel, yeah. right? Um, this is our main uh, attack hose, so to speak, mm -hmm. whenever we go out to a fire. Um, yeah, so this is the first thing you use yeah. when you arrive at a fire, yeah. David. That's correct, yeah. So yeah. you can see there, um, this is our branch for it, you know, uh, mm. open close. Yeah. You know, you can adjust here so you can have a jet or you mm. can have a spray, all right? So, so even if we have a large fire, Right, yeah. this is the fastest thing to get out. So we'll go with this to start with. Yes. While that's been sorted, while that's already making some progress, then we'll need more water, obviously, for a large fire. So then yeah. we use these hoses. Oh, yeah. These have a 22 millimeter bore. Okay. These ones are 45 mil. All right. So there's a lot of water going through here. And, and you have 70 mil at the far side. But the 70 mil on the far side will be used to feed the appliance from another source. Oh, yeah. Because okay. we have 1800 litres of water, but that's not going to last forever. Yeah. But they'd be too heavy to drag around as a firefighter. So the 45 mil are easier for operations. Okay. In here, then, the good old fashioned chimney fires. So there's your rods. Oh, they're no yes. different than the rods a chimney uh, cleaner would use. Yeah. But they're obviously bamboo, which helps. Mm -hmm. They don't burn. Uh, this is our heart kit, which is bits of saws, brushes, some lump hammers, mirrors to look up into the oh chimney yeah. to see if we can see any, anything inside in the chimney once, once we're uh, pretty sure it's nearly out. Brilliant. Uh, below that then, what we have in here then, uh, these are, if you can see, these are yellow. These are for calves, right, which is uh, compressed air foam. Yeah. So these do not get used for water fire fighting, only foam. Okay. Um, these, uh, these can be inserted. Mm -hmm. in through a hole in something or into even like if you had hay oh on, yes if okay. you had hay on fire yeah you'd insert this in and oh, then all yeah. the, everything comes out from this end here wow all right so obviously we have different lengths on those again um very very handy very convenient yeah so if you were were attacking a fire with the 45 mil hoses uh, using water then this is the branch we use yeah. Again, it operates the same as the high pressure hose reel branch. You can adjust it for jet or for yeah. uh, a cone shape. And then you have your on and off switch. Again, it's quite simple to use. Brilliant. Okay, How you we use move around the back. Training. <laughs> All right, so if we move to the back of the appliance, yeah. I'll just pull these over first. Yeah. All right. 
Right, so we have our ladders on the roof, on the rooftop here. Yeah. Right, this large one in the middle, this is a four-man lift. Uh, it's quite a heavy ladder. Oh. Um, as you can see, we have several red, red locking mechanisms for safety. Oh, safety yeah. chain okay. on here to keep it all in place. Yeah. And there's our reversing camera. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Um, if you move over to this side, you can see this ladder here. If you come down the side, you probably see it yeah. a bit better. Okay. That's our 10 meter ladder, right? Mm -hmm. So that is the one we would use more often. Yeah. Okay. These are all operate off a of gantry. So this can be disconnected here mm -hmm. like that. Then you would pull the gantry oh, out. Oh yeah, that's handy, isn't it? You pull the gantry out. Yeah. Right. And you wow. can pu push the gantry back. All right. <laughs> That's a lot easier than climbing up a ladder here, Dave. The old, yeah, 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 they used to be, in that, yeah, they're long, long gone now at this stage. <laughs> this is the same, this comes down on the gantry, yeah. and then you release the ladder Yeah, you afterwards. can see the way it's shaped, it's kind of sloped. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to make it easier. And that's, that's a four-man lift, that's mm. the 10 meter is a three-man lift. Mm. So if you were to come over here to this side. Yeah, you've got all the LED lights as well here, spotlights. Uh, oh yeah, 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 and they're so bright. Yeah. On the ladder on the underside here, we, we'll use that to get into people's lofts and things. Oh yeah, okay. You know, if they don't have an attic stairs. And above that then you'll have a, a roof ladder. Right. Okay, so if we were to go in here, mm -hmm. this is our main pump, right? They're produced by Godiva. Um, yeah. Very strong and very reliable pumps. Yeah. Uh, this one is referred to as a 1030. Mm -hmm. So that'll deliver 3,000 liters a minute right. at 10 bar. Right. Now, all the parameters need to be in place to get the perfect, but uh, that's what it's based on, right? Yeah. Um, these here are two inlets, so mm -hmm. we can actually have an outer source of water coming in through here mm -hmm. and going through the pump and straight back out to the fire. We don't have to use the water on the appliance mm -hmm. in that case, okay? Uh, this, this cap can come off. We have an adapter here. Oh, yeah. This would go on in place of the cap. Oh, yeah. And then you would have a hard suction hose. A hard suction hose, unlike the red 45s, mm -hmm. it won't collapse, it's built to stay open. So you would put that into an open source and you can feed direct into the back of the appliance if you oh needed right. to. And then the three upper ones? These ones up here are our delivery lines. Yeah. So these are the ones you would actually connect in your 45 millimeter hoses to, mm -hmm. to make down to the fire itself. Yeah. All so right. you can have three firefighters at the same time well, distinguishing. You'd have, you'd have three, three lines of, of, of yeah, delivery hose, yeah. uh, right. but each one would have two firefighters on the end. Hmm. So, yeah, you'd want to have a pretty big fire for that amount, yes. you know, um, fortunately so far we haven't had to do that. Then we have a walkie-talkie there as well. Uh, this here is yeah. actually our radio to MRCC, which is the oh, Monster yeah. Regional Control Centre. So this gets us back to co the control centre without having to keep going up to the front of the cab yeah. to relay messages back and forth. If we need more help, call in more oh, stations, yeah. you know, or looking for further information. And then you've got all your air pressure gauges here. As we well. have here these high pressure gauges mm. then are for, as I said, the high pressure hose reel on top, which would be our initial attack. Mm. Uh, the low pressure here then, so this would operate at 24 bar, this would operate at 5 bar for the low pressure. Ah. You know, we have a compound gauges, that that's, uh, comes into effect when we're drawing water from an open source. And then these LEDs are for your water and foam. Yeah, these LEDs obviously, yeah. they, if the water goes down, the yeah. lights go down and it's full. great because you can see that at night oh you can see it quite because a bit. as you were telling me this is the old way this is the old-fashioned way of doing it but <laughs> it's still guy. very very effective yeah it is actually you very, can very see very the effective. level you have a ball level. up yeah. here so it's a ping pong ball effectively oh yeah it comes down with the water <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah so yeah i mean it's old but it's still effective <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah we watch both because yeah. if the digital went defective exactly that's not gonna lie yeah yeah brilliant okay so if you're and then the screen, oh yeah, up here as well, another compartment. Yeah, so up in this compartment then, these mm. are the hard suction I was talking about yeah. for bringing water into the appliance. Oh, yeah. As you can see, they don't, they don't collapse, yeah. right? They're four inch, you can get six inch, but we operate with four. Okay. Right. And then we've got these screens, what are, what are these telling you? Okay. Yeah. So basically these screens here, when, 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 when you're in operations, you know, all the information here will be how much you're delivering, so each one have its own. Oh yes, how many okay. liters per minute you're actually delivering to the fire. Oh. You'll also have a readout of if you have an open source of how many liters you're getting in, and your pressures mm. will be there as well. Okay, and then up here is it's these are the same as what you'd have up in the cab. Okay, they're just your your blue lights, um, uh, exterior lights, exterior yeah. scene lights, and and the pump bay lights. This is the pump bay. Okay. Okay. And Here then, once your once your PTO is in operation, oh yeah, to operate the pump, you can decrease or increase the revs on it if 
depending on how much pressure you need to put out. Oh yeah, okay, on that. All right. So and it's a throttle, effect, effectively a throttle. Yeah. And then we have these incident boards as well then. All right, so this yeah. in, the incident board, right, uh, obviously it's used at the incident, Yeah. right? So you, you put in the information here, the incident commander's name, the command support, so the mm. command support officer, with generally the driver as well, yeah. and uh, they're the ones that relay messages back. So you have your location, the time of it. These are all, you just tick these off to say what you did or didn't do. Yeah. Incident detail messages, you might say, yes, the house is on fire. So you'll write in here, house is on fire. All right. And down in this area, then you would actually draw a map, picture the house, picture the fire truck, so to speak. And then you have a stand as well. In case well that's just a tripod yeah. stand. You can stand these on it, yeah. 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 On okay. this side, yeah. this is our breeding apparatus board. All right. All right. This is a vital piece of equipment. Um, what you have then is, you have the clock, which mm -hmm. is obviously a time. This dial over here, so you, have, you can see there's time in. So once you set that to time in, if they have 100, or uh, say, say 180 oh, yeah. bar in their cylinder, hmm. so you now know they've only got 22 minutes of air. So wow. this, this tells you how much they have. So you keep an eye on this, and then you'll be on the radio to the team saying, your air's, your air's getting low, you've certain amount of minutes left, you want to start thinking about coming back out again. Wow. All right, so then you, their names and their tags, their tallies yeah. will be in here. As, and then their team, team A, team B, etc. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, just moving around to the driver's side. So there's a second hose reel. There's three lengths of hose on the hose reel um, on both sides. So if you needed more length on one side, you could actually detach them and reattach them on the far side. Oh, that's very well done, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, they, they give you about 54 meters. But if you were to put both three lengths together, there's yeah. 108. Very there's good. the 70 mil hoses I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. you, they're too big and too heavy with water in them to be trying to firefight. So they're literally for delivering water from pump to pump. So this, in that sense. Underneath that then, we all know about fire hydrants. So this is a stamp pipe. This is a key and bar, mm. right? So what you would do is you obviously connect this into your hydrant. Yeah. Your water will come out at this end, right? You lock your 70 mil hose here. This is the female coupling. And this would be locked in to the male coupling. Oh, I get you now, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, this is the key and bar. So the bar, you would actually put down into the key part in the hydrant. Mm. You just put this into it. Oh, to turn on the water. And then you yeah. turn your water on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> simple as that. That's your tap. Yeah. All uh right. -huh. So underneath that then we have, this is a monitor. It's a ground monitor. All right. So you have firefighters holding hoses, trying to put a fire out. Yeah. If it's quite an extensive fire in a specific area, what you would do is you would set the monitor up, connect your hose in here. Your strap here, they would strap the hose onto it. And then you can just walk away and let that do the work by itself. Oh, so right. that's the, and again, that's adjustable from cone or, or a jet. Yeah, that's brilliant. So isn't that it? works away by itself and frees up firefighters. Ex excellent. Okay. These are delivery breaches. Basically, what happens here is, like I said, your 45 goes down to the fire. So you could have one line out, you connect it in here. Yeah. You can now split it into two lines. So you now have two, two fire hoses fighting, but you've only one line coming out to it. Oh, yeah. Okay, David, and this, this is the foam. So at the moment, you're carrying 1,800 litres of water. That's correct, yeah. So you pour in the foam and it's, it, it, it dilutes itself, isn't it? But the foam, what you're doing with the calves is, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's depends on how much pressure you put on it, how much water you're going to get in. But you're looking to have, when you're using the foam, foam is a lot lighter inside the hose than water is. Mm. So you don't want to be putting too much water in there. So you have, you have to get the balance right yeah. in that sense. And then you just get your lovely uh, foam, which is easier to pull around. And you'd use that more for fires that water is just not good for. Okay. So if you would rub a tire, like tires at a, a tire garage yeah. on fire, you wouldn't get it out with water. You'd need the foam. Oh, yeah. And we have a little telescopic ladder up here. So a telescopic ladder up yeah. here, that's basically for our own use. It's not for ad incidents itself. You know, if you see up here, there's a, a place here to position it. That's oh, just yeah. for maintenance to get up on top. Oh yeah, okay. Or if we had a problem ourselves on an incident when we needed to get up on top. So the telescopic ladder there, is, that's just handy. And then use. up here. In this locker then, you have, uh, as you can see, these, some of these lockers actually tilt forward. Oh, that's fantastic, yeah, isn't it? Look, yeah. <laughs> they tilt They down, hold look. their own weight. Yeah. Okay, so what you have here then is a BA emergency kit. What right. this, this has inside it then are just, these are hoses. Mm. So if a BA operator was running out of air, and they didn't have time, say, to get their cylinder off, well, yeah. then you would connect this up and supply air from outside. Oh, yeah, um, okay. But it really is for emergency situation. Mm. Um, under normal circumstances, BA wearers get out in plenty of time. Then we have, these are our life vests. 
Okay. Um, the life vests are basically, if we have to operate anywhere near an open source of water, then you have to wear a vest to go anywhere near it. Okay. So the only people that would be going near that area are firefighters wearing a life vest. Yes. Oh. Or life and jacket. then these blocks. These, these, are, are, these are step, step blocks. Yeah. We use these at car crashes, uh, RTCs, road traffic collisions. And basically what you do with these is you put them under the bodywork of the car oh, yeah. uh, against the, the actual body itself to support it so that the suspension then is, 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 is isolated and the car won't be moving around while you're trying to deal oh, with yeah, the Oh yeah, so you would shove these underneath the sill you, of the car. You would shove these underneath yeah. the sill of the car. Or the front bumper or whatever. You could do it this way. So what happens is it locks into place. Oh yeah, yeah. This would be on the ground, of course. Yeah. You put it into place. And what happens now is you can't push it down on the suspension. <laughs> it stabilizes the car. Brilliant. There are different shapes, other shapes and sizes, but around the other vehicle. Yeah. Now, what's after starting up there, David? I hear a, an air compressor. That's the compressor inside. If you see yeah. here that we're actually plugged in. Yeah, so, so this is plugged in all, all the, the time, time when, when we're not using the yeah. vehicle. Yeah, and what that doing, that's a, our electrical supply. It keeps the compressor ticking over, so we always have air in the appliance. We don't have to let it run for 10 minutes to build yeah. air up. We don't have time for that. Um, there's also electrics inside, a uh, phone, um, an iPad, and radios. Oh yes, all of the radios are charging inside. Everything is being fully charged, even though the appliance is switched off. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, what you heard there was the air obviously had gone down a bit because it's been sitting here a while. So the yeah. compressor now has rebuilt up the air so we can drive straight out the door without having to wait. So instead of having the radios inside here charging, they're already charging in the fire appliance. Uh, yeah, I'll show you them in the back of the cab in a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely fantastic. This is, uh, this is automatic ejection. You okay. don't have to pull it out. So when you start up the appliance, this gets kicked out. Oh, so it flies out automatically? It flies out automatically. You don't have to pull it out. <laughs> And what if, what, if, what, if you, what if you forget this one? This one here? Yeah. But that's just our exhaust system. Obviously, you have an exhaust pipe, you've got smoke all over the building. Yeah. So uh, this is an extraction system. This stays on the appliance and it'll move with the appliance up here if you have a look. Oh yeah. It'll move. Okay. So when you get to the door, the spring there will, it will hit the end and this will automatically be disconnected once you're at the door. Oh right, so the whole idea of this is to have as less fumes as possible inside In the here. building, yes, yes. So, that, so when you... So when you turn on the ignition, this ejects. This automatically ejects yeah. because obviously this is uh, electricity is live and uh, you don't want to be damaging it. Yeah, and when you drive off, this will disconnect itself also. This automatically, yeah. this will disconnect when you get to the door. <laughs> so all the fumes then are extracted out of the building. Unreal, yeah. David. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've thought of everything. It's just simple magnetics on it. If I just, there is a button here to release it. There you go. Yeah. All right. All right. That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, and then very we good. have very good. More. All right, so yeah. what we have here then, this is a, just a fan, right? Mm. So if we had a building on fire, we've managed to get the fire out. It's still a lot of residual smoke. You you, what you do is you'd set this up outside the building, outside, say, a door, and what this will blow air into the building. So it's a positive pressure of fan, and it blows air into the building, and then wherever the smoke then will be cleared out through other windows and just clears the whole place up. You can then, you'll be able to go into the building then without having to wear breathing apparatus. This then is our portable pump. As I was on about earlier on, hard suctions uh, feeding the main tank mm -hmm. to keep you supplied with water. This is what we use this for. So it's a relay system. So you go from your open source to the, this pump and from this pump to the appliance, All right. right? This is, a, this is referred to as an 8.5 pump. Um, this is your delivery line here, which would deliver to the appliance. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see it. This part here is where your hard suction would go on. Yeah. All right. So you have two delivery lines. Yeah. And uh, as an 8.5, what that means basically, it will deliver 800 liters of water at five bar. Again, if all the parameters are perfect, that's what you'll get. Wow. Right. So there are 10 tens, um, but the that's bigger they are, the heavier they are. 800 liters a minute, is it? 800 liters a minute at five bar. <laughs> And yeah, David, yeah. just the, uh, the spotlights there as yeah. well, yeah. So um, that's our light mast. Yeah. Um, that's operated from the, the, rear, yeah. the rear of the appliance. Yeah. It's a simple thing, just press, push the button to, to extend it fully. You can adjust it and twist it in any, uh, any direction you want. Okay. And um, yeah, it just works away by itself. It's very, very, very handy to have. Yeah, they're all LEDs yeah. as well. And automatically, it automatically replaces itself once you, once you shut it down. Okay. And turns the lights off as well. And in behind here is just the exhaust box for yeah. the truck. Yeah, yeah. So David, we're going to hop inside. Okay, yeah. Just no to go, if you can go around the other side. 
And look at this, guys, as well on the floor. Look, there's drainage holes at either side. So you can wash this, David. We can wash this yeah. down. I mean, it's a, it's a solid rubber mat. And uh, yeah, so, I mean, some of the uh, kind of calls we go to, we could get a lot of mud and dirt on our boots. Mm -hmm. And so basically, we can literally hose this out and don't have to worry about it pooling anywhere. Okay, and in here as well, helmets. So you've got different helmets, David, for for um, inside cars as well. You'd have smaller helmets. <laughs> well, oh, wow. the start yeah, the standard fire helmet is uh, quite large. Look at all the radios! And quite protective. Well, the reason why we have all those radios is, well, obviously you could lose one, you could break one. Yeah. Or they could just be faulty. So we have a little bit more than we need, but you have different areas. You have the, inst the commander, sector commander, command support. Yeah. So uh, several different people on a call will need a radio. And these are charging, as you said. Everything is charged. Yeah. There's um, three pin sockets. As you can see in here, the in lights front. are on. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, we have 3-pin sockets, standard 3-pin, 240. We have also USBs as well. They're mm -hmm. always on when it's plugged into the mains yeah. here. Now, oh, David, if you can just demonstrate, um, so you've got all your equipment and you hop inside. Now, can you just demonstrate to the viewer there when you're putting your breathing apparatus on your back? Okay, yeah. so basically, right, when you, when, you, when you jump on board here, you're going to be in full fire kit. So we have to put our full fire kit on before arriving. Yeah. Uh, just to let you know what that's like, uh, basically at about 3 o'clock in the morning, you're at home <laughs> in bed asleep, yeah. Yeah. right? And uh, your alerter goes off, you jump out of bed, get some clothes on you, get down to the station, mm. get into your fire kit, then you have to go into the watch room to find oh out what the call God. actually is. Yeah. Us, that's another one of the stations but all we're right. all on the same uh, radio line oh yeah so okay. um we're, if once the appliance is turned on here all the radios are turned on so you'll pick up each other's calls brilliant yeah so if we routed another call we can change uh change the channel on it yeah. and we can actually speak to the other stations rather than speaking to the control center so that was another fire station dealing with another accident that was another yeah. well incident incident um, yeah, yeah yeah so that was yeah yeah okay yeah. so we'll get back to <laughs> demonstrating the yeah, breathing okay. apparatus going right. on your back so basically right yeah. as i was saying there like get out of bed you got to get down here you got to get in to see what the call is in the first place get your fire gear on and get into the back here yeah. and at three o'clock in the morning we can do that in about four and a half to five and a half minutes wow right so you get in here anyway fire gear on Obviously, you have to put the seat down, yeah. right? Um, these are locked into place. The, the BA uh, sets are locked yeah. into place. Um, your mask is up here. Oh, yeah. All right. So this is your breathing apparatus mask, yeah. right? So you'll take this off, put it over your head, your straps to tighten it into place, and your breathing your valve goes in here. And that's obviously on your face. Yeah. Okay. And when you sit inside then... Like so before you do that, yeah. you sit in, right? You can yeah. release. There's your release handle. Oh so yeah, the release handle down here. So yeah. you pull the release handle, if you look up here. Yeah. Pull the release handle. Oh yeah, it pops and the, out. the set comes out. All right. So this is your tally, which would mm. go into the BA board at the back of the appliance. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to release this now. It's a little bit loud. Okay. All right. That's activated now. Okay. All right. Unless this tally goes back in, it's mm. constantly activated. It can't be turned off. If something happens to a firefighter, say he gets knocked unconscious in a, in a oh, building, yeah. nobody can see he's knocked unconscious. Mm. If this doesn't move for about a minute and a half, the alarm will go off on this. Oh, right, okay. Now, if a firefighter gets trapped yeah. and he's not unconscious, he can activate this alarm himself. All oh, right. Now, if you want, I can turn it on, but it's going to be really loud on the camera. No, no, we leave it, we leave okay. it. Okay, <laughs> perfectly fine. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is a firefighter's safety device. Mm. We do carry radios, obviously, yeah. but if you were knocked unconscious, you can't talk on the radio. Yeah. So this is your means of communication to the outside world, a okay. vital piece of equipment. Once right. the tally's in, it's now been deactivated. So David, I'm just going to walk in over to the cab and look at all the lights up on top here, guys. Yeah, all there's very a, modern. Yeah, there's also red lights in there as well. <laughs> yeah, so, and all the yellow handles. And yeah, two big steps to get up there. Very well done, very well done. Okay, let's hop inside the cab here. Now it is an automated gearbox here, so uh, let's see there, look. We have a gear stick here, so no clutch pedal. So it's literally just drive mm -hmm. and into neutral, into reverse, mm -hmm. and then fully down, you can go up and down through the gears manually. So it's all very well done. Yeah, we're in neutral there now. So David, up here as well. So this is basically yeah. our, our 999 board. 
Yeah. You know, so you hit the 999, it activates all the blues. Mm -hmm. um, when you get to the scene, you have arrival scene mode here. When you hit that, uh, what happens here is other lights, the scene lights will light oh, up. Yeah. So there are the white lights. You can even turn them on manually there yourself. Yeah. Um, all the exterior lights. Yeah, if you're, uh, you have to turn this on for it to operate your winch. Oh, yeah. Um, we have sirens on the steering wheel, um, mm -hmm. but you also have a, a button here. You can press this if you want for sirens. And then your reversing camera. This is our yeah. reversing yeah. camera. Uh, once the, if you had the ignition on and put it into, yeah. if you wanted to turn it on, you can put it into reverse there and you'll see how it works. It's a full color screen anyway. It's very, very good. Brilliant. Down here then, this red switch. This oh is our yeah. isolator switch. Uh, yeah. We have it on at the moment, but uh, this has to be turned off so mm -hmm. that the charging system can, can work away here on the appliance while we're, um, while we're not here. Now, this is a very strange one as well, David. This, the snow chain. Oh, so yeah, I forgot yeah. about, yeah. So yeah, this has uh, built-in snow chains at the back. Um, so the snow chains come down and they spin around. Yeah. And, well, the, and the, the wheels of, of the fire appliance are driving over the snow chain as constantly. it's spinning. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. what you do, you have to stop to operate it. Once the chains are down, they actually, they actually have a, a wheel that touches off of the wheel of the appliance. Yeah. So the wheel of the appliance spins the wheel of the snow chains yes. and the, the snow chains constantly rotate under the tire. So that's, it's, like I said, it is for snow. So you'll be looking from four inches of snow and up. Below <laughs> that, the chains will be dragging on the ground itself. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't got to use them yet. Yeah. <laughs> and once, once again, that's, you know, we might have some plans in there of, of different uh, building structure, uh, yeah. you know, which is really handy for the officer to look at on the way to an incident so he can make up his uh his own oh, risk yeah. assessment uh, before we get there we don't have any taco guys no no taco. no taco but this is handy as well david the height here look yeah so if you're going under low bridges absolutely yeah, yeah. the last thing we wanted to be getting our uh, fire plane stuck under a bridge on the way to a call you know? oh imagine yeah can you imagine trying to explain that and then in here uh in this is just a storage box yeah. uh, more paperwork again you know oh, yeah. paperwork uh plans risk assessments and that and then um, you also have this, you want. this pad here, here as well. Here. Yeah, this pad here is basically the modern paperwork, right? Oh yeah, okay. So okay. as the incident goes on, say if uh, the officer in charge says to the, the command support officer, put a message into control saying that we have the fire under control, yeah. then yeah. you would type it in fire under control here. Right. And that's time stamped as well. We can also mm. use it to take photographs of the incident. Now these photographs are internal, you know, they're, they're, you know there's no fear of them being um yeah. seen outside um so that pad is very handy it's it's all the information is on it as it happens so there's no mm. mistakes uh no trying to remember afterwards what did or didn't happen we have all our information on hand we have three pin sockets on board and here we have the usbs yeah look at the usbs yeah, guys look you know um six of them yeah six of yeah. them there right uh more usbs down here and a good old 12 volt cigarette lighter so to speak and three pin sockets but these are only alive Oh, when, right. When the appliance is plugged in. When you're plugged in. Ah, yes. Yeah. And yeah. then they're what, not alive. What's call. this? That's our, that's our terminal imaging camera. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So, and if yeah. I get in front of it there, you might be able to see me. Oh yeah, I see it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very handy. Very handy. If we have fires behind walls. Yeah. You know how hot the wall actually is. Right. Okay. You know, and also in a lot of smoke, we yeah. can't see anything. So we need, we use the camera to see the fire through the smoke. And, and David, you, ha <laughs> you have no stereo. <laughs> uh, no, uh, we're going to emergencies, not a nightclub. <laughs> yeah, no, no creature comforts, guys. But I do like well, the we driver's seat. We get tea when we get back. Yeah, yeah you're entitled to that. Yeah. Uh, and, and the seat there, look, very easy to clean that off as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, absolutely. Now, some of the old uh, material, they, they, you could smell the smoke off of them, uh, you know, after they were washed. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. So and, we, we, and we have a shut off there as well on the left. Yeah, very good. So David, I am just going to give it a quick start up and we'll demonstrate the cable being ejected. So uh, yeah, we are in neutral. So let me just start it up. There you go, guys. <laughs> okay. I think it's time to take the P320 for a drive. No. Oh no, oh. bad news. Oh. Huh? Yeah, disconnect all those uh, cameras. Gee no, Your this is minutes. real life. This is real life. Guys, I swear, <laughs> you couldn't ride this. We had all the cameras set up on the fire engine. And we were just about to set off on the drive. And his pager went off. Now there's an emergency. <laughs> so they're all coming in literally within minutes. 
Look, another firefighter here. Look, they're all coming in. <laughs> I don't want to be in the way of anyone. Guys, I swear to God, this is not planned. This is real life. The pagers went off. So the response time here is anything between four and five minutes. This is, look, another guy. This is unbelievable, guys. I've never witnessed this before. So the fire engine's already outside, so we've literally warmed it up. And the guys are just gonna run outside and hop on board and head off. <laughs> Getting dressed up. Okay, so uh, we're gonna see them set off, guys. Oh, they're starting up another truck as well. Look at this. Just about to set off in a real life emergency situation. I couldn't have planned this, guys. <laughs> I swear. There they are. Look. Fantastic. Okay, oh, they're third, taking out a third appliance, guys. And they have the FL6 as well from 2003. And another Volvo there as well. P320 so we have 320 horsepower from its inline five-cylinder diesel engine 239 kilowatts so David a bit more powerful than the Volvo fire engine I was driving for Cannonball Ireland so um, yeah a big difference in power guys <laughs> which is greatly appreciated <laughs> on our side of it <laughs> and, and yeah. David you were telling me as well that once you turn on the blue lights, there's no restrictor. No, the there's restrictor no restrictor. There's no restrictor on this. The only thing restricting you after that is uh, safe driving uh, methods. Yeah. We still have to get to the call as safe as possible. Otherwise, uh, we won't be able to do anything. Um, <laughs> once the lights go off, you're back into the standard uh, driving rules. Yeah. And the, the appliance is restricted to the 90 kilometers again. We can slide it into second gear there. And then, as you said, we can... If you yeah, go forward yeah. one notch, you'll have full six gears without having to do any Triptronic. Yeah, we can do manual mode as well, which is very That's good. That's correct. You also made a very good point as well that the OptiCruise gearbox, you usually have a stock here and you could operate it here, but mm -hmm. you were saying that with the high speed that you do, if you're going up bumps, like here, for instance, yeah. you would nearly knock it into a gear that you shouldn't be in. Yeah, or because... Uh, Different appliances may have the indicators on the opposite side of the steering wheel. Yeah. So um, you may go to the stock thinking you're turning on the indicator and you actually change the gears by mistake. Yeah. You know, because we all, we're all uh, allowed to drive different appliances. So it depends on the appliance setup. Yeah. Um, you can get a bit mixed up sometimes. And so it's safer to have it in the gear stick. And if David's pager goes off this time, guys, <laughs> You're going to see the biggest driver change or the fastest driver <laughs> change in history. <laughs> For, Formula One style. Yeah. Uh, we'll be, I'll be jumping over there like a bullet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she seems to start off in first gear. And then, yeah, we're straight up into third. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. This fire engine only has like 1600 Newton meters of torque. It doesn't seem like much for the size of engine. We also have the retarder as well, which is fantastic. So you can use that to assist you in the braking as well. Oh, and it's absolutely needed, yeah, yeah. And David, what do people who are watching now, all the young people, what do they have to do to enter the fire service? Well, once you read the required age limits, they're basically just apply like you would any other job. You can get in touch with um, the County Council HR, or if you know someone down at your local fire station, or even if you don't, call down and ask. The, if, if the guys are there, they'll always welcome you into the station. You can ask them whatever you want, and they'll chat to you about it, and tell you about it, and tell you how you can go about applying for it. But other than that, County Council HR uh, for application forms. Okay. Um, you don't need to have any 
uh, special requirements such as high level education. I mean, if you have experience using tools, that will obviously help. If you're involved with uh, maybe a voluntary organization, something like the civil defense or something, that will also help with your mindset. But at the end of the day, it's full training is given, you know? So if you come in with zero experience, all you need is uh, enthusiasm. And yeah. you, will, you will be trained up on everything that needs to be done. Um, and you've been trained to, to drive this fire appliance at high speed. Yes, you are. You're tra it's, yeah. it's basically referred to as ESDS, which is an emergency service driving standard. Yeah. So basically you start off with, um, first of all, you have to get your C license um, in order to be able to drive uh, any truck or the appliances. Then you would go on to the ESDS and that will start off with teaching you how to drive defensively. Uh, that doesn't mean slow. It just means being more alert to everything around you and being more protective not to have an accident. It will move on then into the more advanced until eventually um, the final part of the course, you will actually be taught how to drive at speed with the uh, lights and sirens on. You yeah. live within a mile two, and a half. 2.4 two kilometers of the station. Yeah. Once you're on, the, once we're a retained fire service, you get a retainer's fee for the year, um, and then you get paid for trading and you get paid for call outs after that as well. But you have to stay 24 hours a day within the 2.4 kilometers. Now, you have annual leave, because it's a, a 365 job, um, you're on call also on weekends, bank holidays, the whole lot. So you can take, you have a higher level, higher amount of annual leave than you would have in any other job. But you can also take casual leave on top of that. So you can take a few hours off, you can take a day off without touching your annual leave. It is restrictive, but once you plan ahead, you get used to it. I've been doing it for 12 years and it's only occasionally it has been a little bit awkward, but in general, I've managed to get through okay. So yeah, yeah you were saying earlier on, we said we refer to it as a plastic body. You know, of course we always use the word plastic, but it's basically referred to as a composite body if you want to be exact about it. And you know, this is our first one here in the county of County Clare, but as far as I know, there's about two others in the, in the country. Um, it's a new concept for obviously uh, appliances or trucks, and it's also um, a new concept in Ireland for fire service. Uh, to acquire one of these uh, appliances, we actually do have to get funding, and that comes from the local, f uh, the fire engines come from the Department of Housing and Local Government and Heritage. So um, it's also decided then by the Minister of that department. And uh, what happens then is it'll go to tender, and, um, and that'll be produced by the Office of uh, the Government's Procurement. And once all that is in place, uh, you receive your funding to acquire these appliances. So there will be more uh, composite body uh, yeah. appliances turning up around the country over the next few years, you yeah. know. Um, and, and as far as I know, in the Republic at least, there's yeah. only two firms building these. Yeah, and Sean Cho is one of them, as we yeah. mentioned earlier on. And, um, and the other one down in Carlow, isn't it? As far, Carlo. Yeah. 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 So. Um, the price of this would be, it's in or around a 451,000. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> at that's, well, 451,000, guys! And that all comes with fully kitted uh, airbags as well. Oh yes, the side, <laughs> it has side curtain airbags, guys. That's, that's correct. Four yeah. of them. Um, yeah. Now those side curtain airbags are an option on, yeah. on all of the other new Scanias, but they're actually standard with this crew cab and by the way, these crew cabs are built in Södertälje in Sweden. So they're built in the hometown yeah. of Scania. Yeah. So, yeah, this is yeah. fantastic. We're just back at the fire station. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the, uh, the 451,000 is just for the appliance. It doesn't include all our, our actual firefighting oh equipment. Oh my God, it doesn't include all the equipment, yeah. guys. Yeah, so, so here in Shannon now, we have a, a crew of 12. You know, um, officer, sub-officer, and then you have mm. uh, 10 firefighters after that. Um, David. Yes. Your pager didn't go off. No, it didn't. Thank God. I didn't get a chance yeah. to press the blue lights, guys. That's all you wanted was to press the blue lights. <laughs> I wanted to press the 999 mode. I'm just getting back to the line. Front wheel on the line. And that's where we're gonna wrap it up today, guys, from Shannon Fire Station. A huge thanks to David Mason here from Clare County Fire and Rescue Service. David, thank you so much. No problem at all, Starbucks, it was my yeah. pleasure. Thanks a lot.
And make sure you apply, guys, if you want to be part of the fire service. They're always looking for new trainees. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyone but, uh, can apply. I do hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. And I'll chat to you all again next weekend for another video. Take care and thanks for watching. Cheers! We are in neutral. <laughs> there you go. The electric one is off. Exhaust hose come off. <laughs> this is very good. Disconnected itself, guys. Oh, <laughs>